one source for local news. All right, well, it's time to see if we can give away some free money here on Cash Call from Winner's World and WPDE News Channel 15. So let's see if we can uh, spin up a big number and uh, give away some money tonight. Headed towards the 515. Oh, I think we're going to get it. Oh, just shy. $215. If your phone is ringing in mere seconds, know the amount on the Winner's World Wheel is $215 to be a uh, winner from Winner's World and WPDE News Channel 15. The cash call is straight ahead. Remember that amount, $215. After a great day of fishing, the only place to go is Winner's World. After a hard day's work, I like to go to Winner's World. We get through play at 18, we're going to Winner's World. After a few hours at the beach, I love to go to Winner's World. Hey, let's go to Winner's World. It's not how you play, it's where you play. Winner's World. Let's go to Winner's World today. Florence, South Carolina is receiving tonight's cash call from Winner's World and WPDE News Channel 15. They have five rings in Florence to answer the phone and uh, be a winner tonight, let's hope, just uh, uh, by telling us how much is on the uh, Winner's World wheel. I heard a little something there. Was that, is anybody there? No? No ring yet? Okay, we'll get that phone dialing and uh, see if we can find a winner in Florence. If you haven't sent us a card, uh, do so. Uh, send it to either the Myrtle Beach or the Florence studios, and uh, maybe one day we'll call your house and uh, give away some free money. It looks like uh, we did not uh, get a call, uh, get a, a, a number that would work tonight. So no winner tonight. We'll do it again tomorrow night uh, right before the 6 o'clock news. Have a uh, wonderful evening. We'll do cash call again tomorrow. Coming up next on your local news at 6, as the floodwaters continue to rise across the Grand Strand and PD, we'll have the very latest information, including river levels and all the closings you need to know about. Floyd's flooding is not only affecting the roadways, the rising of the Waccamaw River is beginning to take over entire communities. I'm Karen Millette reporting live. Coming up next, we'll have the latest on Flood 99. A Dillon County man is being tried a fifth time for the murder of a state trooper. Now some Dillon County residents want to know how can he be tried that many times. I'm Tanya Brown and I'll have that story coming up on News Channel 15. All that plus Chief Meteorologist Ed Piotrowski will have the latest on the river levels as well as our seven day weather forecast and Mike Deneau is in with sports. It's all coming up next on WPDE News Channel 15 at 6. This is WPDE News Channel 15 at 6 with Rich Everett and Allison Floyd. And now, the Grand Strand and PD's number one source for local news, WPDE News Channel 15. Good evening. Thanks for joining us for your local news at 6. I'm Allison Floyd. And I'm Rich Everett. We are live at the Myrtle Beach Pavilion where 10 years ago tonight, Hurricane Hugo hit, devastated this area, and changed many of our lives forever. But tonight, of course, we're dealing with a more recent hurricane, Hurricane Floyd. Today, President Clinton declared the state a major disaster area. This declaration is because of scenes like this one near Highway 9 in Horry County. The declaration means that people in Horry, Georgetown, and Charleston counties are eligible for disaster housing assistance, as well as low-interest loans from the Small Business Administration. Money also will be used to help repair roads, bridges, and utility structures in Georgetown, Horry, and Marion counties. And joining us now with the latest on the river levels is Chief Meteorologist Ed Piotrowski. And Ed, hopefully you've got some good news for us. Uh, I wish I did, but overall it still looks like the cresting of the rivers is going to happen over the next week or so. Let's take a look at the latest graphics here and we'll show you what we're talking about here. The Waccamaw River at Conway forecast is still crested about 16 and a half feet next Tuesday. It did rise a good six inches today to put it at 11.8 feet. We expect significant rises here toward the latter part of the week and over the weekend. Now for Gallivance Ferry, the Little PD River there is well up as well. Plus four inches today, it's forecast to crest tomorrow, and that means the Fort Gretsch community out there near Nichols, where the Lumber and Little PD rivers come together, of course, that will mean uh, quite a bit of flooding out mm -hmm. there as mm -hmm. well. At least we have very little rain in the forecast over the next couple of days. Maybe some showers tonight, but things get better and stay dry right on through the weekend. Yeah, That's some good so. news. Good. All right. Thanks, Ed. 
Well, the flood continues to force many people out of your homes, mm -hmm. and for some of you, the worst is yet to come. And joining us with more on that is Karen Millett. Karen, how is it going today? Well, Rich and Allison, as you can see from the construction berms here behind me on Highway 501, the preparation is continuing to make sure to keep roads like this one safe and also areas of Conway. But there's another community here, one that, whose river is also rising, and it's a community who already feels lost under the water. In times of strife, communities tend to come together. That's the case here for the residents of Buck Creek, where the strife is due to water. We try to keep track of the water by putting sticks in on a daily basis. Yeah, this was yesterday. So it's come up a couple of feet since then. The water is creeping closer to Craig Dean's apartment, but he feels lucky in his situation compared to some folks here. We evacuated, we bit sandbagged, we plastic, moved our things with our families and, you know, just keep your fingers crossed. Whatever happens, happens. You just have to deal with it. Dealing with it might not be possible without the help of neighbors. Friends are offering a hand to move furniture and appliances, trying to save at least a part of what's left of Buck Creek. Neighbors have been very helpful, helping each other, trying to salvage whatever you can. There's, it's really a waiting game. It's a community that feels threatened and far away from help and information. I feel uh, abandoned. You know, instead of high and dry, it's low and wet. Both roads into the area have been closed down, and now the residents try to fend for themselves. What else are you going to do? So um, just do the next thing in order to keep yourself safe, your family safe, and then your possessions safe, which is what we're doing. Now, to make matters worse in areas like this one, this is not a designated flood zone, so most of these homeowners and renters do not have any flood insurance. So with the disaster relief coming, that will certainly be a help to the residents of that Buck Creek area. Rich Nelson. All right. Thanks a lot, Karen. And, of course, he made a very good point. Mm -hmm. Just to be happy everybody so far is safe and uh, no loss of life so far from our perspective. This storm killed 63 people. That's so, right. you know, you try to look on the bright side and understand that at least everybody is safe little worse for wear, but safe so far. That's right. Well, one of the biggest concerns right now as we move forward through this is the safety of the water in Horry County. Joining us now to address some of those concerns is Ron Tata, who is the Director of Environmental Quality Control. Thanks so much for being with us. And uh, what should people need to know about the water in Horry County? Basically, as far as the water supply goes, all the large city and public systems are safe. They have done an excellent job in maintaining pressure and proper disinfection residuals. When it comes to private wells or small providers who have their own systems, we encourage people to be safe rather than be sorry, especially if they lost pressure. We recommend that they boil their water, bring the water to a vigorous boil for a minute, or disinfect it using unscented bleach until such times as the floodwaters recede and we are able to assess the problem and hopefully disinfect the system and sample it. If you have a private well, I guess after the floodwaters recede, uh, recede, you'll need to take a sample of your water and have it tested? Absolutely. In, in some cases, they may need to disinfect the well prior to taking sample. And what is the situation with the uh, wastewater flooding in Horry County? A problem with that? Wastewater, again, we've been very fortunate. Uh, most of the systems are operating under full power or under emergency power. We have some isolated problems uh, as far as public water system goes. The biggest problem seems to be in the Conway area. However, the city working with the National Guard uh, Corps and others have done a superb job of trying to dike and find alternative ways to pump wastewater. A couple of things to bear in mind during this process. We have had uh, potential overflows from wastewater, septic tanks that may not be working. Common sense is the key word here. If people use common sense in how they deal with things, we will minimize any health problems. Number one is to avoid going through flood areas, avoid children playing in that area.